Big News, How Did This Get Made is doing a virtual live show on September 6th. Mark your calendars because we are tackling the bad movie classic Troll 2. And we are very excited to partner up with Move On for this very special event. Tickets are pay whatever you can afford and all proceeds go to moveon.org. Go to hdtgm.com right now to find out how to reserve your spot for September 6th live virtual show of How Did This Get Made doing Troll 2. See you there. In 2020, Girls Rule, American Pie 9 was released on home video. And in that movie, there is more heart humanity, and normal behavior that is identified as human than in whatever the fuck we just watched. We saw a beautiful wedding, so you know what that means. Largo, continuing our exploration into the two worst characters in cinema's history. I don't even remember their names. I think it's Abby and Jake. But if not, it doesn't make a difference. Him and her will do just fine. Movie came out in 2024. What is it? Well, it's a sequel to a movie that we did, which I like to call a rom-com fight club. Now, at the end of that movie, there were these fun slides, like the end of The Hangover, that apparently were shot at the rap party for that movie. And that's the basis of the sequel. (laughs) The movie starts with those slides and goes, what if? And here's the kicker. Both of these movies based on a book by a really racist writer. (laughs) So we won't get into that. We'll enjoy this because she's not involved in those movies at all. All you have to know is our two main characters, uh, they fall in love. uh, They get into multiple MMA fights. There's gambling. There's mafia. And then they somehow go to Mexico. They're married. This all happens in three months, and the girl's 19. Okay, so that's... (laughs) That's that. I would say that the first act ends at minute 45, and it's an hour and 25-minute long movie. I won't talk more about it than that. We'll get into all of it. But first, let me introduce my co-host, Mr. Jason Manzoukas. What's up, jerks? Come on, Largo. Night two. Netflix is a joke. Netflix is a joke festival. And you know what? Um, Netflix is a joke festival said, can you do movies that are on Netflix? And we said, no. no. We said, we personally would rather pay for these movies. We Sometimes, want- multiple times. We want our audience to be frustrated just like us. We will not make it easy on them. Correct me if I'm wrong, Paul. We've seen this movie before. No, we watched the first. Yeah, that's what I thought. A beautiful disaster. Yeah, I kind of remember it. Yes. I remember it quite clearly. Luckily, this movie has a full-blown recap of that movie in the first five minutes. Thank God for that. Now, I don't remember. Did that movie have cartoon graphics on the screen? No, that's new. That's new for part two. Part two really uh, pulls out all the stops. It's Roger Rabbit 
meets uh, Fritz the Cat, which is an old reference, but I'm going to stand by it. Um, you really are tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referencing Fritz the Cat. It's Roger Rabbit as you pick up stuff like just like. What's in my bag? It's Roger Rabbit. You're just What's plugging in, in specifics. You're just plugging nouns in. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm glad that it's just not us talking about the beautiful animation style of a beautiful wedding. No, no, no. We have somebody that is going to weigh in on all things. My other co-host, please welcome June Diane Raphael. Thank you so much. Welcome, June. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, angry. I'm so I get it. mad. I'm so mad. You're so mad I'm because so you mad. love the movie so much. <laughs> I, the, f- the first thing, one of the first things I wrote down was, have we made any progress as a culture? Yeah. <laughs> Just have we, and it wasn't even like progress since the first movie. I mean, like, have we made any progress, you guys? Any. My question is, are these movies each an announcement of the impending apocalypse? <laughs> Is there, how many in this series? This is two. How many are there? Well, this just came out. Oh. So okay. hopefully but three. Is it books? Well. I did say there was a book. Okay. I, you I, said book. Yes. I, and I'm not lying. Is a beautiful baby is it, coming? Is it, y- <laughs> is it your book? It is not my book. <laughs> is it your book? It is, it is not based on Do my book. Do you write these? I did not. This is... Next one's called Beautiful Podcast. <laughs> Here's what I'll tell you about this. And just to kind of put it in simple specifics. The way that Twilight uh, spun off Fifty Shades of Grey, there is another series of YA novels that are very successful. This is kind of the dirty alt version of them. Now, the first... The books th- aren't dirty, you mean? The books are dirty. They are. Yes. So this is like, this is the fan... What's the books it's based on? Does somebody know that one of the nerds here will know? No. I love that this audience doesn't know. Wait, I feel we, so safe. Did we accidentally so safe, get a so cool happy. audience? I'm so happy. Oh no, this is going to be a bad show. <laughs> no well, nerd? Okay, yes, thank you nerd, please. <laughs> All right, so explain it to me. So I only know this because I just listened to the beautiful disaster episode. Got it. Um, Much so like I, everybody else, to prep for this, everybody watch. <laughs> so I did, I did go one. over some of these details in that one. You did, and what it actually is, is that Dylan Sprouse is in another series of YA movies called The After Series. Yes, and this is a parody of The After Series. And those are based on Harry Styles' fan fiction. Oh, wait, that's the, is that the new, that's the new Anne Hathaway movie? <laughs> Um, no, no, that's, that's a different, different Harry Styles fan yes. fiction that has spawned a successful film franchise. I have an answer for you Correct. now, June. We have not moved forward as a culture. And in fact, we are moving backwards. Put so, us in a grave. It's over. I listened to the trees from the happening and will be killing myself tonight. <laughs> Goodbye. Just for brevity's sake, the idea is that these First of are all, kind the of fact the... that there's any source material here is so absurd. I've been sitting on what I really want to say, which is this is based on a novella. So That's this, is ba- you, this is so this is based on a short book. <laughs> yes, the first movie based on a full book. This oh. is based on a novella. And then uh, this novella, they really just didn't use at all. And so the ass- third movie will be based on, like, a magazine article. <laughs> a pamphlet. Well, and the fourth movie based on a tweet. <laughs> now, now I will say this. A couple more details that are equally confounding about this. So um, they <laughs> did put the author of the novella's name in the credits. She says, I am not involved in this. And she has tried to get her name out of the credits. What? Unsuccessfully. So um, they have said, we've done this with the author's input. She says no. (laughs) So it's apparently a 24-page novella. And this is... Wait a minute. 24-page is not a novella. It's a short story. I'm so sorry. 
What? Well, I can write that. I can write the next one of these by the m- Monday. Now it's a chapter. Now we, we gotta the the three of us have to write the next. Movie. <laughs> I well, don't want Jason, them to hear. I don't want them to steal the movie. I we will tell write, you, we can do it. They wrote another. Well, the author did continue to write this series, oh. but spun it off. The spinoff series is about Travis's brothers. So uh, I was so flummoxed when those guys <sighs> showed up. I was like. Who the fuck are these idiots? Like, who who shook loose a bag of potatoes into this movie? So and I couldn't pick, I couldn't, couldn't pick one out from the other. Couldn't they make all... heads or tails out of them. And one of them keeps looking into camera. I'm wait like, a has second. this motherfucker never been wait, on a set before? Wait a second. Are you telling me that the scene, the hottest scene in cinema since Top Gun's volleyball uh. scene? The shirtless spike ball scene. Please play it. Um, I wish that I had. That scene was. I only wish they had put playing with the boys in the soundtrack because they can't was, afford they that. Did the, they did the high fives. They did all the tropes of that uh, of Top Gun. And here, here's the thing. I'm not here to yuck anyone's yum. I'm not here to make fun of anyone's looks. But those guys are decidedly good looking. They're not jaw dropping like the beach stops at these <laughs> dudes and their tight packages like i don't know what's going well, on well you that know guy- they're all maddoxes so they've all got that big hog and i'm also like <laughs> they're all packing that mad dicks the way that they the way that they show one of those brothers uh. dick bulge i was like it doesn't look sexy to me it looks like something's wrong There's it looks nothing, like, like there is a I wrote down at one point, I was like, I hate women. I hate men. <laughs> Sex is gross. I hate it all. Yeah, it's I, I, had that, I wrote me. that too. And then I said, the only thing I'm attracted to is the cartoon characters. <laughs> oh, the my gosh. The cartoons so, were gross. Uh, the narrator's voice was gross. Who was the narrator? Real question. Who was the narrator? I think the narrator, I think, was the, like, concierge. Sancho? That kind of, I think it was Sancho. I thought the narrator was the priest that was training Miguel? the priest in training. No, that's not Miguel. No, no, the oh. priest training the priest in training. Oh, I see. Oh. Like, so, he's like, Miguel's like, Father, I know I've been training to be a priest, but holy shit, let me tell you this story. And then the priest is like, you'll oh. never guess what my priest in training told me. And then he's telling the Pope. You're telling me the Pope is a character in this movie? This movie the is Pope a story is that we tell the Pope. Oh, Because shit. he's like, it's so crazy, Next Pope. Next movie, beautiful Vatican. Well, <laughs> then they send Russell Crowe from the Pope's Exorcist oh. to, then, to then dispose of Travis and Abby. All of this backstory and these crossovers and whatever's happening with these characters, like none of it amounts to anything. Like this, this doesn't deserve any backstory or other movies. But what or about when novellas. Abby says to Miguel, "What's your backstory?" When she said <laughs> that, I threw my pencil okay. across the room. And then when we found that, I had to pick it up. But I still was just, I wanted the anger of that moment. But by What's the way, your backstory? But his answer is devastating Nuts. His and answer, insane. Make no mistake, the most interesting character in the movie, Miguel. For sure. And at one point I was like, if, if we cut to this house one morning and there's like 15 dead bodies and they've been slaughtered, like it's Miguel because he grew <laughs> up there. He witnessed violence like something's going to turn and he's going to become so disgusted with the behavior that's going on in his childhood home and the disrespect yeah. that Miguel is going to flip out. And I wish I saw that movie. <laughs> Let's go from the top. Obviously, this movie starts off in the montage, the sideshow montage that we see at the end of the first film where these characters are having a crazy night in Vegas. We start off the movie right where it left off. Uh, only three days, I think, pass in six? Six days. Okay, so yeah, it's very close. Um, but enough time for them to make an Apple slideshow of all the photos from last night. Oh, oh, so, I'm sorry. That you mean in Vegas? Oh yeah, in Vegas. Oh, in Vegas. I mean, nothing has happened. Like right. no time since right. that is but, but the just, last movie. 
Well, yes, but the we end pick of, up right? we pick up there yes. in the beginning of this movie. So just to talk about that slideshow for a second. So <laughs> they had to, in their drunken stupor, make a slideshow. Do you think they're oh, just... I gotta go to... I gotta do you, hold on, let me... Hold on. Uh, yeah, that's a good transition. Do you think they're Ken just Burns. airplaying it to the TV? Like Gotta someone be. had to figure out settings. Oh yeah, what Wi-Fi, ne- what Wi-Fi to... network? Are Someone's we, are we... an iPhoto. Like I said, and just... they had to do the thing where they're like, "Oh, the code. You have to get the Zero, code to one. send to this." Yeah, and like most only hotels... Google Chromecast. How can I do my slot show? Most hotels won't let you do it. Most, and they, thank God, all the pictures just happened to be from the night before, and, and not, in chronological God. order. Yes. And then we get the craziest reveal, which is Abby has been straight up branded like a Nexium victim <laughs> uh, with her her new husband's name in her inner like area right there. I mean, in that's her a inner full, area. Yeah, inner like, area. I inner cum I gutters. Like, I like that way to put it less. I think that makes inner it sound area. grosser. Her inner area? Inner, it's inner not area. inside her labia. Just like in that. It's on her hip bone. I know that they call it cum gutters on men. I didn't know what they call it for women. So here. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they're called cum gutters on men, but I think it's just squirt drainage on women. So she's branded. She's married. They also conveniently give them like a hundred and eighty-nine thousand dollars. Like, what a great plot device to be like. Oh, and you got a shitload of money, too. And they stole the money from the last movie. I do remember that. But then I I had forgotten entirely that she is a child gambling prodigy. Yes. And that's why, and he's a fight. He is a fight fight club. He, and that's why in some ways. I wish he was Tyler Durden. I wish he was Imagine Her. Listen, in some ways, though. This movie made so much more sense to me than the last one. I was oh, like, "Wow, I feel the opposite." Really? The I was last like, "What's the plot everything. of this?" The last You're one, like, I get it. At no, least, no, you don't get college it. College rom you, No, no, no. You think you got it, but when if you remember back to the time when we watched it, we had to find out that she was like a child prodigy we found that out 50 minutes into the movie well I this think movie, it was <laughs> insane and her father there was no record of her dad and then he was called it was yes, absolutely right. very, bananas she's very like um demure in the first movie and then opens up in this movie she's full-on insane like she's fighting children she's cursing. i love that the sequence. opening that sequence oh my god I loved. the the wh- that oh the whole sequence with Thumbelina. I thought is it was great. <laughs> I got that. Was that. Perfect. I was like, insanity. this is sanity. Wonderful. She's like, I will fight this child because I won't hurt her as bad as another person yeah, might. The, her thinking is, who would somebody's gonna hurt this little girl? I'll go in there. But I just need a costume cut to sexy cat costume. <laughs> what? By the way, I do want to just talk about the worst costume in the entire movie, which is again back to the opening scene. Oh, I know um, what you're gonna say. She, within the first two minutes, Abby pukes on Travis, vomits on him. He does not change out of that shirt <laughs> or that outfit. No, I would say it seems for hours because no, Paul, he's wearing that. So I was tracking there the same exact thing, and she wakes up in a thick black tee, and it's thick and it's cheap and it's I got big heavy. and it's. It's and I it got says, big. Yes. And she's wearing dice. that. She's wearing that all the oh, way yeah. to when she's on the bed with him. And he's wearing the same clothes the in Mexico. Yeah, they are so disgusting. Yeah. They're so disgusting. They're they don't 19. take a shower. Ugh. Who cares? There, there's Gross. also I've never ever seen a movie with such an like egregious edit in my life where it's like Oh, they think they're being killed. They, I guess, we don't know, beat the shit out of a, a bellhop. Like, 
fully they waterboard him. him. They waterboard him. They waterboard. Let's be clear. They murder that man. I think but so. they don't. Of course, every hotel in Vegas has a giant pitcher of water. Just an open pitcher of water. I was you like, know, in all the hotel there? carts that have an open hole in the yeah. top. Wait, what? I, what I couldn't understand is what was. I know they thought it was a gun, but what was he yeah, bringing in? A dryer. What was that? Like a hair, a dryer. hair dryer? Where or is a the cord? It looked like a Where is the gun. cord? It was I agree. a cordless hair dryer? I've never, I didn't know we had the technology. I also. I was like, what is that thing? Well, it's future tech. This takes place in the future. <laughs> what movie, what also, what kind of character also enters by putting a hair dryer <laughs> through? <laughs> That's how I'm entering. Hair dryer. Um. But here's the thing. <laughs> that guy comes in. They think it's a gun. They cover him up. They beat the living oh, fuck out horrible. of him. And then they don't reveal it. Nope. They don't show you any of the funniness of, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. They go, like, oh, God. You no, never I'm... get to see that he's okay. Nope. No, he's nope. not. They're just like, here we are at the helicopter. <laughs> what? What? When they go to the helicopter, I rewound him. Like, did, what did I miss? Did I'm I not, blink? Did I have a Not stroke? even like a nice helicopter. Like, do you want to find a helicopter from the scene? Or like, a, like a helicopter from the scenes in Magnum P.I. where he's flashing back to Vietnam? <laughs> but I'm also like, at one point they go, Michael can't come with us. I'm like, who the fuck is Michael? I didn't even know there was a Michael here. Oh, and then <laughs> Also, how do you not bring, uh, was his name Buzz? Buzz, yes. How do you not bring Buzz back? One of the most charismatic people in the movie. I don't remember Buzz. Buzz is the, the other pilot movie? of the helicopter. For 10K, oh. he'll take you anywhere. He'll oh, take you to oh, Mexico yes, without course. your passport. Cool. Okay. He was amazing. He was amazing, and Kyle Richards was as well. What? Kyle Richards them. is What great. was that? She was that, great. I was great. flummoxed by her arrival only because I was, I was wondering, is she playing herself? Well, here's what's so interesting. I want to know when this movie came out because for those who know. 24 just came out. I don't believe out. it. I don't it's believe it. It's only a few months old. January You're 24. saying 2024, but is it currently 2027? <laughs> yeah, it, it's just not. The numbers aren't lining up. Um, but but it was so wild to watch her deliver some of those monologues about marriage, knowing what we know now, yes. of course, about her. And what do we know Mauricio. now? Mauricio. So Kyle has has had this long relationship with a man named Mauricio, who who by the way sells a lot of real estate in Putamita, Mexico. So I did have the thought like maybe she was just there, <laughs> and they hired her like a local hire. Um. But they've had this marriage, like, they've just really presented themselves as, like, absolutely in love for years, for, okay. like, 30 yeah, yeah, years, yeah. okay? And the marriage has fallen apart this year. Got it. And it's... Oh, so is that why... Is she... Because I feel like, is she being down on guys in this movie? Or is she being, like... Well, that's interesting, too, because she has a joke about them being lesbians, and she did have a very sort of will they, won't they, sort of a lot of lesbian rumors about her and this singer Morgan, um, what's her name? Morgan Wade. So that piece You guys of it, know that, but you don't know anything else. That piece, <laughs> Okay. That piece of it was so crazy. It was, a, it was a wild scene to watch because it just felt like we were watching Kyle talk about Mauricio I and Morgan. I thought that well, too, and then, but then... Little do we know that she plays a very pivotal role because it's the mother of the Parker. guy that Abby was supposed to be with. Now what listen. Odds? What are the odds? Did you mind that he had a British accent and she didn't? Honestly, I didn't hear a Wait, goddamn does Parker, word. Does I Parker thought Parker a British, had a British accent. No, Parker in this doesn't movie. have a British accent. I don't think so. Does he? He does. He does. Oh, maybe is he trying to cover it up, maybe? And it's coming through. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, remember all I know is I movie. his dog bark sounded American. What on also <laughs> I, I this the entire scene of <sighs> her this this scene I couldn't make heads or tails of because she's asleep, still dressed as the cat uh, wrestling costume. She she is, puts that back on. No. She's this is after she wrestled. She's out of that costume. She pisses on herself, or just pours tequila. She goes, Am I peeing on myself? And then she what? then goes in to cheat on her. No, she husband. goes in just to get a selfie just with Just to get a selfie, Paul. Just to make him just to make Travis jealous. But she jealous. puts that on. She does. 
but then falls asleep. She, but the amount of noise that she, this Parker is such a deep sleeper. What she's is he screaming taking? at full volume. It is so loud, everything she's doing. And he's just like, in a way that is like, it, I don't think so. No, it was unsettling. Like something, there's a medical event happening if she, he's not waking up to this. She is making cat sounds. Which I couldn't I well, tell this, you why. I mean, this is. That seems like an actor's choice. <laughs> this is the callback. What if I did this? Oh, it is? Yes. because she the making first, cat sounds? Yes, the first movie when she gives him a hand job. I remember the hand job. She goes, oh, nice kitty. Nice kitty. And she grabs the kitty's tail. So this is the heightening. But this time she's the kitty? She and is he's now, the dog. Right. But which, why? Is a, which is a new form of sex play. The, well, but she's not that. a kitten, though. Like, that's what but she, she but did that's like think. A when she was thing. giving him a hand job, she thought she was touching a cat. Now, let's be no, clear. No, she's the cat. He's I the know dog. She's she the cat. Has, she, I know let me be she's clear. the cat. She has broken into his room while he is asleep. And then sexually assaults him. That's what I don't understand, though. Is the, <laughs> but still, like, I cannot understand why she's making cat noise. Well, I don't either. She's making because she's noise. deadly asleep thinking she's a cat. Well, she Paul, dreams what? about... Yes. How do you know that? First because of all, he's read the novella. So then... <clears throat> So then why does he think he's a dog? Because he's dreaming about being a dog. <laughs> Guys, you're these so aren't... fucking dead. By the way, these this are This movie is all here. You're saying this like, it's you know you've had dreams of flying or dreams or even to perform. And, I'm know, a dog. Ruff, ruff, ruff. I'm a dog. <laughs> but he only starts making dog sounds, I think, after she starts jerking him off as if that's what happens when dogs get jerked off. Like... What I will say about both of these movies, the plot and the story and the choices are inscrutable. I don't, inscrutable. I don't understand why they're making these this choices, is a movie. but thank God they are. Because if they weren't, if this was a flat telling of the same basic story points, boy, would it be just awful. Oh, I mean, the fact that at 45 minutes into the film, he goes, maybe we should take a break from each other. They've only been she together. Says that. She oh yeah. Says, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, they've only been together for about seventy-two hours as a married couple. I think we just need some time to figure each other out, like find ourselves. This movie was the longest movie I've ever seen. I've never, Same. Why was it so long? Every time I looked and stopped to catch my breath and just like reorient myself in the real world. Somehow there was 45 minutes there left There was always, every time. always 45 minutes left. And I was so shocked. It was every so opposite. much is happening. Literally so much is happening. So much so that you're like, wait, what? All right, I have this friend who freed a rooster. The rooster that he freed okay, is now, trying Paul, to kill him. I do not gloss over this. <laughs> because the only love story I care about in the movie is Shep and the roosters. Shep, and the, Shep is easily the most interesting character in the story. When Shep is trapped in the closet by the roosters oh and his mother calls from hospice and his grandmother dies on the phone with him. No, no, no. It's no, I mean worse. on the floor outside. Well, he no, no, doesn't get to talk no, to her. No, it's even worse because <laughs> what they say is the mom says, hey, uh, whatever hey, you're... Hey, Shep, I'm hey, in the Shep, hospice with grandma. We're going to pull the plug. Yes. And then grandma goes, hi, Shep, I want to... Like, they wouldn't even let her finish a sentence. We've just watched Matricide. Yeah. It's so crazy. I it's... loved that part. Shep is the best. Shep, also... I don't know what's going on in Shep's mind at all. Yeah. Shep, Shep is in the middle thing. of, like, a nervous breakdown. I laughed when he wakes up the next morning and the roosters have drawn, yes. etched out pictures the, of yes. him. I was laughing the rooster, so hard. Do you have the picture of all the different drawings and sentences? I wish, The no. roosters have trashed his room and graffitied all over the walls. Just one. In, 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 in English. <laughs> and, a, Just, and a picture of him. What? But, but that's in this movie. Oh but my God. am I wrong in remembering it like that Shep freed the rooster? Oh, so the all rooster. Of them. All of them. Oh, so that, why do they hate Shep then? Well, they, they hate, they're fighters. They're fight. Yes. They're, they're, they're cockfighting they roosters. 
He lets them all free in the room, like, oh, we're all going to hang out now. But they're trained to kill each other. Oh, So they yes. begin to slaughter each other. I thought, okay, I thought What did it was, you think? Yeah, what did you think? Happened in there. I thought they were just mad at Chip. Oh, I mean, for, I, I, I kind of did. Because of the writing on the wall. No, no, it I... It seemed th- personal. I think it wasn't that's... like a guy who's like, oh, shit, I let these dogs run loose. It was like these... these Motherfuckers Wait, those like, dogs. now you're going down, asshole. Like, we have, a, it felt like they had a vendetta for him. Well, I think that's also true. <laughs> oh, I don't think, I don't think these cops true. respect life at all. They but, are going for But you're for right, it. though. Like, this isn't a bit. Like, the most compelling story was him wrestling with whether or not he was a carnivore. Like, yeah. whether or not, and then... And then actually confronting like animals who were trained to kill, like it was compelling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, compelling. especially when that when you realize that is the the second beat of him admitting to being a hunter and that yes, upsetting his exactly. girlfriend so much, and now he decides to care for animals. He has get ready for it <laughs> an arc. <laughs> He does. Shep, that makes the sense. only person who has an that arc well, in this movie. I'd the also rest of argue them, like Travis and what was her name? Abby. Abby. Abby, like him and her. They start in one place and they seem to end in the exact same, same place. place. They 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 they, they times I, zero each other. They I go ask a question? right back to zero. Do they have chemistry? Like, oh, that's a great question. Like, is it fun to watch them fight, or is it no. just like, ugh? No, it's neither fun to watch them fight nor fun to watch them kiss. No, I'm also I, not like turned on by their sex they, scene. I had more. I was more scenes. turned on by the kitten and the dog sex scene than when he's like, "I'm oog, I'm Wait. gonna." Oh, I, your I team didn't like Parker. That. In this scenario, I wanted Abby to fuck Miguel the priest and be like, "Oh yeah, listen, I, oh, listen, I, Miguel. Oh yeah, you taught I, me how to juggle. <laughs> You're about to become a priest. Let's go." It, what I couldn't understand is the scene where they decide to take a break with their bachelor parties and bachelorette parties. She says to him, he says, like, I've really been a dick. And she's like, no, you haven't. No, you haven't. And he's like, no, I have. I have. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> and the, multiple times in the movie, because the same thing happens with Mare and Shep, where he's like, I've been really acting like an asshole. And she's like, no, 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 no. And he's like, no. Yes, I have. Like, the women will not accept the bad behavior and toxicity of these men. And it's so disturbing. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say, Abby is questionable in some of her behavior. Why you say that? (laughs) When she... When she's like, I need to fuck you, just put it in an inch, and then she locks them in there to, like... Oh, let's be clear. Travis and Abby are both toxic and insane. Yeah. Full stop. Yes, but but I just want to acknowledge that. I okay, fine. <laughs> but his behavior around the topless beach, around her taking her shirt, like all of that was absolutely insane. That was a little overboard. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right, though. They are both, like, terrible people. I, I don't even know if they're terrible. I don't know what they... It's you know what literally like watching someone play with two Barbie dolls and just, like, yes. smashing them together. Yes. Like, like it's it doesn't... It feels like they are each triggering the other person constantly as yeah. if that is chemistry. You know what it feels yes. like to me is if this movie was made... And then um, it's like drunk history. They get somebody really drunk. And they're like, explain the movie to me. Ooh, and I love this it. movie feels like a drunk history reenactment of someone telling you about a rom com that they saw. And then, and someone then like, w- there's cartoons. He's punching them. He's like, and movies. Then- and then the guy is fighting a chicken because he killed a chicken. But then they, they, no, it's, it's roosters. And then they're like, fuck you. And they write on the wall. And then another guy, he's like, my boyfriend. He's like, I'm getting a painting. And then he gets knocked in the mud. Then they're in the mud. And then the priest is there and he's juggling. And it's like, wait, what? Or it's either, I agree, it could be that. Or it's written by like two 12-year-olds. It's written by two 12-year-olds who are like, I think this is what sex is like. I, I think this is what it is to be in love. I do like that they like safe, safe sex. I mean, they, they oh, really... Oh, well, you know what was smart? I will give the movie this. It was very smart 
to set the movie in Mexico where we all know you cannot get condoms. <laughs> you can't get them. Well, illegal in Mexico, impossible. Even but if listen. you've got a hookup like Sancho, who's with them 24-7, <laughs> can't ask my guy for some condoms? But here's the thing. Why was he looking? I did find it very strange that they just, just settled into this Airbnb and he immediately looks in the bedside drawer for condoms? Uh, did yeah. it come with every Airbnb? <laughs> Bibles and condoms. Like, and if they are there, don't use those. Then he goes, then he leaves. Yeah, don't. don't here's, use this is those. a PSA for everybody. Don't use found condoms. <laughs> oh. No. Don't do, just don't do it. He then leaves his room to go ask Shep if Shep has condoms. And Shep appears to be wearing like very offensive. <laughs> <laughs> like, dre- he's that? dressing like very offensive Mexican, stereotypical Mexican gear. Big mustache and a bandolier like yes. El Guapo from Three Amigos. Yes. Like, I was like, he's got this, but no condoms? They, they're wearing the same clothes that they got puked on in, uh. but this guy's got full on, like, sexy dress up, offensive, sexy dress up. But weren't they fucking in the helicopter? Oh, yeah. yes, they were. Did Maybe they that's where all the, all the condoms went. Yeah. And then how big is that helicopter bathroom? How big is that helicopter that they can go into a private room I'm in that say, helicopter? I can't imagine there's a bathroom in any I helicopter. don't think there's bathrooms. Maybe a hole in the ground. <laughs> like the hole that they pour the water in for that poor bellhop. Um, Here's my question about the brothers. The Mad- Maddox? Uh, the Maddox brothers. The Maddox brothers. So the wedding, ha- <laughs> <laughs> the wedding happens. They're married. And then... After they present her with a ring, why not give it to her before? Great, great. Also, question. if we're, if why we're, not give it to your brother to give her and have that moment before she's no, already because also, you don't want to mess up the wedding day with the ring. You do that afterwards in private. Also, why not? If you're the brothers, why not give the ring to Travis to, to give, give to, her? to her? It why was they, very and, strange. Why do they do it away from Travis as if they're protecting him? From, like, talking about their no, the dead movie, mother in listen, front of him? the movie ended, and I was like, oh, she's married to the brothers. <laughs> Got it. By the way, Got she'll it. be better off. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I also found it interesting. We are like, we need to take a break. Why don't you bring your friends in for a bachelor party, and I'll do nothing? <laughs> like, she is well, like... I, I think she doesn't have friends, except for Oh, Mary. right, yeah. Remember, because so, she... Right, yeah. She doesn't have like, a crew. on the run with her dad. But I was obsessed with watching the... And I don't know where Kyle Richards found... See, I would love to see a whole other movie about Kyle Richards in that resort because she pulls those women together like ladies-in-waiting. Who are those women? Oh, yeah, what Who was are that? They? Is she some sort of, like, from? guru or something? I have no idea. It seemed like she had just... Pay, pay she for these she women. seems to be teaching, like, a workshop in the power of the pussy. That's what she's telling yes. them about when oh. she then sexually assaults the waiter. I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you two uh. things that are going to maybe help this. The movie had to be written in less than 4 weeks. <laughs> and uh, and and they also uh, according to the actors improvised a majority of it. I'm not surprised by that at all and multiple times wrote there's no way that was a line. Like <laughs> People are saying stuff just to say stuff. Yeah, they had one month to write and cast the movie. Uh, So that is it to get down to the DR to shoot this um, on the sets that Roadhouse wasn't using when they were shooting their movie. Oh, wow. So they were really fighting for sets, too. So (laughs) there we go. Now I, 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 I would love to talk for, I guess, the rest of the time we have here uh, about the blooper scene. Oh, the, the one? The blooper the single, scene. The blooper single. I have... I, I, I've i never seen... I've never seen it. One, one, one blooper. There is and it nothing wasn't even else. good. It, it was, was just terrible. celebrating too, like, too long. Bloopers are meant to be enjoyed by you at home being like, oh, they're cracking each they're other up or they're whatever. They're having a good time. No, this wasn't that he at all. He yells. He yells at the director. Roger, stop laughing. I thought what he was saying, I, I don't know if I want to watch it again to find out, actually. I thought what he was saying was, Roger, 
like, when are you going to cut? Like, you've had us scream. Oh, I thought he was like, I can't do this acting with you laughing over there. (laughs) He's like, what do you think? You're on a Netflix as a joke show over here? Oh! Acting! What do you think this is? Hulu is hilarious? (laughs) Hashtag Hulu is hilarious. By the way, Hulu needs to start a festival on the same week. It's just called Hulu is hilarious. (sighs) The cast of the bear doing variety show skits. I didn't. (laughs) You'll see everyone on Shogun do a tight five. (laughs) Wait, but uh, but, uh, that also, like, again, that scene to me of them, like, laughing about the game and that one single blooper also reminded me of my... One single blooper. Reminded me of my favorite scene in the movie which is when she's juggling with the priest, he comes out and fucking eats grapes like Knuckles from Sonic. <laughs> like eating them whole. I thought that That's was a funny choice. Funny choice. Then he drops the towel just so he can intimidate Miguel with his big dick. He doesn't yet know that Miguel is a priest in training. Can I tell you how I <laughs> By the way, can I tell you how I would like to have shot that scene? I thought of this, and I was like, well, I'll never Don't make... Don't love you. Uh, P-I-T. Priest in training. <laughs> Don't overthink this too much, but the way I would have shot that scene is when he dropped his towel, it should have looked like an eclipse covered the sun. <laughs> well, it's, it's like a it whole dark. thing where, His when he, dick is so big, it covers all natural light. <laughs> I would have loved it if we knew Miguel was training to become a priest, but when he saw Travis's dick, he renounced God. <laughs> I would love I would love it. I would love nothing more than if I could make all of my roles force them to make me have a big dick in all of them just by people talking about it. They dedicate 5 minutes of the movie <laughs> to Shep. I am sorry to keep going back to Shep and the chickens and the cocks rather. But the guy who's carrying the dead the dead cock covered who's saying my son my son (laughs) and he's so upset (laughs) and Shep is just like and then that's such a funny scene when everybody's watching and the cockfight lasts one second off camera and then Shep is clearly affected by it and then we go on and they the guy everybody's betting on the Maddox brothers eating hot peppers or something like that. Yeah. But they cut the Shep outside in the world and the guy comes back again like, oh no! And he walks back in again. It's a, the same scene plays out, but Shep is like so moved by it. They spend so much time. Shep alone with the cocks? What? I couldn't understand. She, Mayor was very upset when Shep fell out of the roof. Made me laugh. I laughed laugh. too. Just like, but whoomp. she was, but she was so <laughs> upset. Hey, what's up? But she was so upset. I just, I actually just need an explanation. Then he was saying, he was sort of covering for spying on her, and then was saying there was an earthquake there. What was happening? Is that, Again, was he covering I just for think falling out of the. It seems like no one had like headset mics on, like, or no one, like, it seemed like nobody in Video Village was able to hear the dialogue, and it just looked like. Yeah, that looks like a scene happened. Great, move on. Because there are things I'm just like, I guess that... It feels like all they had was the idea that he's spying on them. Maybe he's jealous, he's insecure, whatever. He falls down into things. And then I feel like the rest of it, they were like, just just go, just riff. You guys will riff. Just just try and be like embarrassed and cover and all the earthquake stuff. All that stuff felt Uh, like riffing to me. But not good riffing. No, I could make heads or tails. But I think that's why it didn't make sense. Sure. Remember when they were playing Twister? Holy shit. With Sancho? And how much, how many disgusting shots of feet there were? The whole thing was so gross. And when Shep farted in Travis's face? I was like, what the fuck is going on? Don't show me farting in faces and don't show me all these gross feet, please. (laughs) This is not a Tarantino movie. You're not making up for this with brilliant filmmaking. This is it, too much it, foot content. And then they <laughs> they sing like this very weird Italian song. They sing it in a karaoke machine while the power is dot, 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 out. out. <laughs> what? No! 
Ay, 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 you made a whole point to be like, it's raining, the power is out, so they've got to play games. Except they've got a functioning karaoke machine. <laughs> what? I also... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I, what's happening. It falls happening. apart. The movie is so unstable. You know what I mean? It's, it's so unstable. It, it, it's, like, it's like it doesn't have... It, it's like baking something without an egg. Ha ha. Without an egg. There's no binder. There's no binder for the cake, and it's just coming apart in your hands, and you're like, what, am, what is this? And, and if we're going to even go there, the two women that try to seduce... Um, uh, Travis. Uh, Travis. Right? Mm. Okay. Sure. Uh. They Ew. take his phone, and instead of doing credit card transactions, anything, they just want to look through his photos. Like, all they're doing is, is like, and they're like, ew, gross. <laughs> gross. Like, their, their job is to rob men and just critique their iPhoto. And I then, will be up at night thinking about the women who went topless for this movie. <laughs> I will never forget so them. So many. And I honor them. And so many. So many. So many so boobies, many. boobs, and tits. For this. For this. Oh, oh my God. Devastating, really. Oh, let's go, it's really devastating. Let's go to the audience. And I do have some oh. more information about the novel. I got some other things to share. But we'll go out here. We'll see what we have And I will on. say, if you are someone who has read the novels or have more book info, can we get house lights? Please raise your hand and give it to us because we, we want to know the truth. All right. What's your name? Amanda. Amanda, why why do you love Netflix? <laughs> oh, oh. What? Oh, it's 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 so good. It is. All right, your question. Do you want to do you want to recommend any shows from Hulu? You better watch yourself. They'll kick you right the fuck out. That's a trick question. All right, uh, you, <laughs> your question. Um, at one point, Abby talks about how she wants to move to Paris. And then with a very straight face and no further explanation, he said, well, how am I supposed to pursue criminal justice there? <laughs> oh, my God, I forgot about that. Yep, thank you that. so much. I mean, thank Amanda, you. Thank great you so work. Much. Both, both of those elements, both thank Paris so much. and criminal justice, never mentioned again. Both criminal of their dreams justice. deferred. Criminal justice. I don't think he knows what those words mean. Nope. Together. I again believe it's an improvised line. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi. How you doing? Um, what's your favorite show uh, hosted by Mikey Day on Netflix? I have no idea. Is it cake? Now, here's your question. My question is, um, this movie's based in Mexico. They speak Spanish at some point, yet um, the owner of the hotel says a made-up word for dick in Spanish and can't say an actual Spanish word for dick. He's just like, Pino! And a, what? <laughs> really? Yeah, the entire time. Wasn't, that wasn't someone's name? Wasn't he no, 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 oh. he was referring to dick the oh, entire okay. time. He, right, because he's excited. He's like, oh, he has a big dick, right? And it's like, yeah. Yeah, like he's in the pool and the, like, the girls are like, oh, where are the guys? And he was like, I prefer Pino! And it's like, my guy, like, Binga, bene, fucking beach. Well, especially you have, because the world is your oyster. Especially because also the they are subtitling like the Spanish speaking in the movie. He yeah. could say whatever he wants. All right. Yes. Your name, Jonathan. And your question. Uh, more a comment. Uh, Shep's iPhone during the uh, rooster murder scene it inexplicably works like an old style answering machine. Because oh yes. right, it played as okay. a speakerphone. It, right, it okay. answers. Things. It thank answers so on its much. own and it plays, plays out loud. Thank you so much. So that he can sob I, in the closet so about his grandmother dying. If I do the movie, wow, if great. I if I give the movie a little credit, I think the roosters answered the phone. <laughs> no, All I think right. you're right. That's that. what I think. I'm assuming the roosters answered the phone just to torment Shep. <laughs> All right, your name, your question. Hello, my name is Yuvia. Um, do roosters lay eggs? Good question, June. I do we? <laughs> <laughs> do we have a Do we have a cock expert in the room? <laughs> Any pino experts? Any pino experts? Um, let me go back over here. <laughs> the movie's right. not concerned with reality like that. Well, here's what's really interesting, too. And, and maybe 
we've glossed over this because everything is so confusing. This went from a pretty, like, heightened but kind of real-world rom-com into fucking like hangover three territory like a me like it's you're right totally they skipped part two and went straight to three and and just changed tones it's like yes these are the same characters but tonally this is a comedy Ooh, i don't think so <laughs> wait you think that this movie thinks it's comedy a comedy first yeah, she pukes on him. I think oh, so too. I think they. I think, oh, I definitely think they have comedy going on. But I mean, like, in the sense that I, I don't know. I think they're still trying to do a rom com. They just don't have any of the beats. I, I think they let go of rom and went into like com. sex and well, sex comedy. Like I think they were going for American lo- Pie. Yeah, exactly. Or something like yeah. Like, one in that one applause world. <laughs> One one person, one clap. <laughs> it's like Thank one you, blooper. Stifler. Stifler is over here. <laughs> Please don't point that out. Please don't point that out. Please don't look at me. Please don't look at me. Please don't look at me. I I uh no, I agree with you. I think that but a I, single clap for American Pie. <laughs> I know this is a movie. <laughs> I know this is a movie with... Uh, I would love it if from now on one of our things was that when people enjoyed a joke or something, they all just went... <laughs> just one. You guys get it. Try and implement it through the night. You all have to make eye contact, though, to make you sure you get You have to connect with same. each other. You've got to figure out group mind for the audience. Um... Focus on the tall guy. He'll <laughs> he'll be your he'll be your leader. Wait, I just forgot uh, the um, the rom. Oh, this is a movie where I know that there are at least two hand job scenes in this movie, but the first hand job scene made me so uncomfortable. Where they're like, "Yeah, I like this. It's good." And obviously, they don't oh, I like hated it. giving. She hand jobs. tears three layers of skin off of his dick. Oh, she is. They they appear to have no lubrication whatsoever. And she is cranking down on that thing as if she is, I don't even know what, <laughs> trying to tear it off his literal body. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We're getting somewhere. This guy gets it. Focus on him now. He's the leader. You blew it, tall guy. All right, your name, your question. Uh, my name's Aaron. And I was going to ask what we think the name of the animated penis is. But someone here, I think, already gave us the answer. Pino. Pino? You think the animated penis is called Pino? I don't think so. Okay. I would love it if that were the case. Ooh, that animated penis. Whew. That was tough. I that hated was, that, it. I, I also like don't understand why we needed to see an animated penis. She's like, give me an inch. And then it just shows how much more... like. Uh, the way that the movie portrays that penis is as if she the says, The cartoon me, penis, you mean? The or cartoon pe- penis. No, the cartoon penis, okay. in my mind, all right, sit with me on this one for a second. Please, listening, Paul, take listening, your time yeah. to explain to the audience how the cartoon <laughs> penis played out in yeah, your we, mind. We got, you. we got all the time in the world. We got all yeah. night, baby. Netflix is a joke. <laughs> okay. Okay, you guys, I love watching an audience learn. You guys nailed it. They didn't nail it yet, even no. though that is a show oh, on Netflix. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to make it. All right. <laughs> you guys blue-eyed samurai that. No. People aren't even Don't looking fall around. Apart. Okay, in my mind, she says, give me just an inch. And, oh, God. Okay. And Travis goes, got it. And he just makes an inch of his dick hard. And then she says, give me a little bit more. And he's like, Whoop, and he goes a little bit bigger. Well, you're right. That is that's what, the way it's portrayed, you're right? You're right that that's what happens with the cartoon penis. But I think she's just, she's saying, give me the tip, essentially. Right, but. But you're right. I'm just saying the way that the cartoon is making me understand it is that he has 
tremendous yes. mind control. And, 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 and let's be clear. Let's be clear. And think about how impossible this would be. He's able to just make the tip hard first? I don't think so. He's getting the blood just to the tip. Quick, just you Powerful. straight through to the tip. Don't get anything else going. This movie did make me hate sex. It does. Me it makes too. It makes me, it me makes too. Me, it's gross. It's it gross. makes me mad that I want the animated penis to be on the t-shirt. But I, no boy, way. do I want it. No way. <laughs> I don't know if this makes it any clearer to you all, but I will, I will just tell you this. Because I realized in my notes, the great Molly Reynolds, one of our producers, did write down everything. A Beautiful Disaster is based on the first book of Jamie McGuire's Beautiful Series. We're still series. talking about what this is based on? <laughs> but Did, are, are, have we not made any headway there? Honestly, here's, the, here's what I feel like. I feel like I'm watching the movie now. I feel like the show is the movie, and I thought we were wrapping up, and I just looked at Paul, and we have 45 minutes left. Somehow, somehow we've gone back in time? In the book. Wait a minute. If he says novella, I'm going to straight up kill... I'm going to kill myself happening style. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> with the house lights off, you guys are struggling with the single clap. But I like it anyway. You keep leading. Watch his hat. Um, I will just, I'm not going to look at you. <laughs> no, them. Yes, them. Obviously... You say novel, I say novella. There's a lot of different opinions out there, but now it's time for second opinions. Cold from Prime. We have some opinions that it seems other people don't share. Dun, dun, dun. Though at times, stranger than Paul's childhood, these reviews are by people who care. <laughs> So let's read if there are boobies or cursing in this movie or wigs that look like hate crimes. <laughs> Typed with love, but never punctuation. Five stars on Amazon Prime. Amazing. Wow. Great Beautiful. job. Fantastic. Wow. wow Great wow. job. Amazing. All right, here's the deal, people. <laughs> this movie just came out a couple of months ago. There's only 458 reviews. 52% of them are five star. But, <laughs> yep. But all of them suck. So I went to Discord and said, I love my Discord. This is written by Claire Meacham. What an honor to witness this. God bless America. Five stars. Do you think she meant Amer this person meant America like Mayor, the character Mayor? Maybe, yeah. God bless America, the character. Sarah Kigger writes, less Dylan Sprouse ass, but he did say Uga wanna fuck, so it balances out. Five stars. And then my favorite one of them all by Ian Bruce. You couldn't make a movie like this in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> what? Five <laughs> stars. Oh, that's amazing. Now, oh, they wouldn't let you make a classic like this in 22. The woke police wouldn't let you make this classic. Um, <laughs> there are a couple of things that are interesting that I wanted to share with you. Uh, we talked about the mud scene. And every time you hear the cast talk about this movie, they seem angry. Well, like, now that just uh, again, up one blooper. How, also, how often do you hear this cast talk about the movie? Well, every time you hear the movie, the cast talk about this movie. I, I how just, much are you tuning into that? Well, I started to go down a rabbit hole. I was like, oh, let me see, you know, I'll, I'll watch a couple of their interviews. Gardner called the mud scene the most challenging to film. That was two days in real mud. Not fake mud. There were rocks wait a minute, in it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is there fake mud? Let's unpack that just briefly. What's fake mud? I guess, like, where they would just... Yeah, like, what? Like, make it... Say, well, you'll see why. She goes, not fake mud. There were rocks in it. And mosquitoes were super drawn to it. And they were laying eggs in it. 
And it was pretty nasty. And I'm grateful that Rob Estes was in there with me. He's a great sport. But that was a tough scene for me. <laughs> then they cut a lot of it. So that always adds insult to injury when you spend a lot of time on something and it ends up on the cutting room floor. I feel for this woman. I feel for this woman. How long is wow. this movie? What's the An hour runtime? and like 35 it's minutes. four hours and 25 minutes. I only wonder because... Minutes. I only wonder because here is a... Th I have a theory as to why there is a single blooper. You have to... You, your movie has to be a certain number of oh. minutes long in order to qualify as a feature-length movie. Yes. So a lot of times the reason there are bloopers or bits at the end of a movie are because the edit has come in too short, short. To, cat to, to fall into the I get category. That. That's normally under an hour 30. This is an hour 40. It is. Okay, so that's what I was wondering. I was like, oh, did it's they just why. need that one? Jason, it's not why. <laughs> I'm, now, I'm trying to help the movie out. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why I think I love the beautiful <laughs> series. I think these movies are my movies. Virginia's real life husband is in the movie. She got married right before she started shooting the movie, as did Dylan. They both are, were newly married. They went to go shoot this movie, and her husband is in it. She said, he's outside the Lucha Libre tent. And I in get an English accent? Uh, As if he's at a Ren fair? Yep. In it's, Mexico? Yep. I knew it. She Couldn't said, figure that out. I had to grab him by the nose and take him out of the frame. My husband and I had a lot of fun with that little cameo. It was his first time acting, so he was nervous. He, he did was great. rehearsing that stupid song he sings in the movie, sang it all day and night. <laughs> Everything just ends. That's Not infuriating because. That's a perfect example of a thing in the movie that makes no sense because they're at a the festival where the where she dresses as the cat. It's a luchador wrestling match. They're eating the hot peppers. It's like a it's a whole festival. And then she comes across a man who's acting like he's at a, a ren fair. Yep. Like, hello, milady. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's this now? How is this part of like the luchador festival? That he's doing medieval stuff? He calls her a wench and she gets mad at him? Was that it? Well, because now I'm wondering, like, does he... He's not an actor, so was that part in the script? Or was he just like, I want to be in the movie, this is something I can do? Yeah. Like, or she was first. like, babe, you should do your Ren fair thing. Exactly. That bit we do that makes me laugh. Oh, oh Netflix. Jason June, yeah. would you recommend this movie? Yes, 100% yes. Forever and ever, I love it, I think. Thank you. Yeah, okay, we're back. Yeah. No, it, no. No. It really, I, I, it depressed me. I, it made me sad. It made me sad for young women. It made me feel like, oh, there's so much work to do, you know? And will we ever get there? And why are we going backwards? It, it made me very depressed. Yeah. I agree. It was, it's. <laughs> <laughs> to me, I loved it. I hated it. And I'm in this zone where I could watch it for the rest of my life and still get something out of it and also hate every minute of my waking life. I don't know. It's like a, it's like a lifetime movie where they are allowed to go hard R, and that's what I kind of love about yes, it. Yes, that's what right? I like. What I like, yes, it was more successful in the first one. Yes. In the first one, because the plot a, a little bit was... The plot was insane. You're looking back on the... This one was crazy. And the, the first one the was The first one was crazy, too. but it at least was an archetype I understood. You know what I mean? They're in I, college. Uh, uh, he's the bad boy. She's the... Ba, ba, ba. It was, the plot is nuts, but I at least yeah. understood, right. you the understood the architecture. It was a I understood the architecture. This is you know? neither a wedding movie nor a bachelor party movie. It's a, like a chase movie. It's a, a movie about the beauty they of Mexico. They go to jail... It's a, it, like all this stuff from the first movie, she never gambles. He barely fights. All that stuff out the window. All yeah. of the elements of the first one, it's, it's almost as if they're starting from scratch and are like, we'll find it on the day. We'll figure out. Should we go back to where the source material is from? Yeah. <laughs> so in oh. 2015, 
Um, uh, all right. I love it. Um, thank uh, you to this amazing L.A. audience. Thank you. were you. fantastic. That's like Great work. A joke. Great work. <laughs> That's our show. Thanks, as always, to the wonderful staff at Largo and our recording engineer, Rich Garcia. If you want to show your love of this episode to the world, what better way to say, I love a beautiful wedding than a commemorative t-shirt. The t-shirt that we made for this episode says, we pulled the plug, Shep's grandma, 1941 to 2024. You can get that shirt and all the shirts from our recent episodes over at Tee Public Stores slash HDTGM. Uh, people, just a reminder that Troll 2, the virtual live show, will be on September 6th at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. The show is a fundraiser in support of moveon.org, and tickets are pay whatever you can. Unfortunately, the live stream is only for U.S. residents, but it will be available to everyone as a regular audio podcast. My book, Joyful Recollections of Trauma, is available wherever you get your books, your e-books, or your audiobooks. And if you want a personalized copy, go to my website, head to Chevaliers, and they will take your order. I'll go there. I'll fill it out. I'll put whatever you want in there. And then uh, you get it. That's the way it works. I've been doing it with them and it's been absolutely amazing. All right, everybody, if you have a correction or omission from this episode, leave me a voicemail at 619-P-A-U-L-A-S-K or write a comment on our Discord at discord.gg slash HDTGM. Then make sure to tune in next week to our Last Looks follow-up episode on Beautiful Wedding to hear me respond to your messages and announce our next new movie. Plus, Jason and I will be going to chat with the one and only Greg Fitzsimmons. So make sure you tune in. Remember, if you listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please make sure you are subscribed to our feed and have automatic downloads turned on in the show settings. People, download these episodes. It's important. It helps us a lot and we appreciate it. And last but not least, I have to thank our entire team to who this show could not be done without. I'm talking about our producers, Scott Sonny and Molly Reynolds and our movie picking producer, Avril Halley and our engineer, Casey Holford and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros. That's all I got, people. We'll see you next week on Last Looks. Bye for now.